Hello and how are you? My name is Winnie Barawa. Welcome into our session where we're going to check on characteristics of a sound policy. If you're new here, always reminding you, please don't forget to subscribe. And if you're a returning student or a returning learner, do not forget to subscribe if you've not done that yet. So we've introduced what is health policy or water policies and we've checked the policy areas. So in this case, you're going to look at what are the different characteristics that make a good policy? What we also refer to as principles of a sound policy. So stay with me all the way to the end. So what are these principles? Number one, we have the flexibility bit. And in this, we are being described that a health policy must be flexible. Noted that in a health policy or in any policy, when you're reading it, it carries words like whenever possible, as it may be, under usual conditions, e.g. A rigid policy is said to serve no purpose. So why is it important that this policy is flexible? Number one is flexibility allows the policy to adopt to different eventualities or to different changes based on the change of the environment or even change of different parts of the of the society remember we said a policy can be influenced by different factors for example we say there's the social factors that can influence policy cultural factors political factors and all that so a flexible policy allows you to reason around with all these factors giving you the chance to know that whatever possible meaning whatever may be happening at that possible time can actually allow that policy to adopt that particular change and give you a way forward. So it's not advisable that the policy is so rigid that you're not able to maneuver around with it. And the second characteristic is that a health policy should be easily understandable. What do we mean by this? When a policy is easy to understand, it means even the users themselves can enjoy to apply this policy. Why? Because the policy comes out as definite, it's positive, it's simple, and has clear terms. When you write policies using very complicated language or very complicated terms, or terms that are very hard to understand, it becomes hard to implement because the people who are expected to use these policies may not be clearly understanding them. So the policy in this case is expected to be easily understandable for the purpose of its implementation stage and even when it comes to evaluation of its outcomes. And the other bit is precise and written. As much as we say policies can be unwritten or oral, we are told that written policies are of greater help, especially when you're working with a team now remember, unwritten policies, sometimes we can say are the, are the assumed policies, as, uh, policies of assumption, whereby you assume people know these things even if they are not put down on paper. And so you expect people to operate on these policies or you expect individuals to follow these policies even if they are not seen or they are not put down in documentation. However, we are told a good policy should be written and precise meaning we can always have a document to refer to read and refresh your mind in case you're not sure what to do so imagine being in a community where there are policies guiding operations but they're nowhere to be read or have reference point and so if someone is new and coming to that area they may not know where to access these policies read or even understand or refresh their minds so it's good if actually policies are written down or they are put down in documents and people possible or in this case, people who are new or people who have interest can read and reaffirm in places where they are not sure. And the other characteristics is consistent, where we are saying the different parts of the policy should be in harmony with the main policy. So remember, a policy could have different parts. The policy could have its definition. The policy will be stating also its aims, it will be providing its provisions, it will be providing its, its actions, and all these parts that make this policy. So now, when it comes to a consistent policy is that these different parts of the policy are in harmony or they marry into each other to give you the bigger main policy. 
So if the policy parts are defining different bits or is providing different definitions, it becomes confused because the person who possibly wants to use this policy may not understand how these different parts come together. So consistency is key, especially when it comes to marrying or having a flow when it comes to the different parts of this policy. And then we have characteristics in terms of fairness and equitability or equitable. So we're being told that policies, as much as they are there to guide our operations or to guide how we work, you need to ensure that the policy align to the principles of equity and justice. Remember these policies are going to operate to guide actions, to guide directions and to guide outcomes among communities and the society where humans live. Now, with humanity, we believe that you need to uphold human rights. And part of human rights is provision of equity or upholding of equity and justice. Equity in this case, we are looking at instances where you're fair and you ensure that you meet the needs and the demand of the community or the, of the people that the policies are serving. Now, policies that are unjust or policies that don't operate on fairness tends to promote discrimination. Now, discrimination is an offense and discrimination is a break of human rights. It means you're not upholding human rights, you're not upholding human dignity and people may not feel treated well and they may start to resent these policies. And these are things that can actually bring effects like people going on strike or go slow or going on demonstrations, trying to ask for change of this policy. So I hope you understand why the effects of uh, the, the the advantage of having a fair and equitable policy comes out. And the other bit is practi practi uh, practicable. Practicable also can be defined with the use of um, feasible. So feasible means that policy should be in a state whereby it can be implemented. And uh, implemented means it should be able or should be possible that we put this policy into practice, that this policy can be done in a community and people can benefit from its existence. So the policy should be practicable, that it should be possible to be implemented. Hence, this policy should be formulated from facts, it should be formulated from well-researched data, and it should be providing sound judgment. So if the policy is to meet the needs of the people, it means you need to base it on facts or areas that have been proven to be true. And the judgment of this policy should also be sound. So don't, uh, as a team, when you're forming these policies, don't do policies that don't uphold the areas of feasibility, whereby you're not sure if you implement this policy is actually going to work. So you have to have sound judgment, facts, and research data or evidence in that case. And then the other bit is stable. Stable um, kind of tries, as you read it, kind of tries to oppose flexibility. So remember we said a police has to be flexible because it can be affected by different factors, all the way from social factors, political factors, you know, beliefs and all that. So as much as we expect a policy to be flexible and it's a good thing, we're actually being told that flex, uh, stability is also expected and important. So why do we expect stability to be part of this characteristic? It's because, yes, as much as we are open to know that the police has to be flexible to different factors of the community, of the, of the environment, is that flexibility is key so that there is no frequent changes in this policy. Imagine if you need to change a policy each and every year or each and every month, it will be something cumbersome because it means those policies are not stable enough to even withstand the changes or they're not stable enough to accommodate the community status at that particular time. So we are being advised that as much as you're making these policies, we need to look at the stability of the policy. Can it exist for a particular number of years without having to be changed? So how stable is it? Yes, as much as there's flexibility, but can we see the stability bit of it? And then the other bit is ability to be reviewed. So that is, can the policy be having a chance for modification, change or replacement? 
because you need to be true with one another. Sometimes these policies can become redundant or they can actually end up outdated. And at this particular time, you want to have a chance to review them, bring in new policies and uh, have to make them look better or make them more improved so that they can serve the people. So yes, policy review is really, really important. So I hope guys you've enjoyed the different principles and characteristics of sound policies from the aspect of practicability, stable, you know, being able to review, being uh, flexible, being able to, to, to be practicable or to adapt and all that. So again, thank you for staying with me all the way to the end. And a reminder, if you're coming back to watch these videos and you've not subscribed or you're here and you're new, please remember to subscribe. Also leave us a comment, share this with your platforms and like our videos. Thank you very much and see you in our next lessons.